Welcome to 18th Century Cooking. I'm John Townsend, your host, and today we'll be taking a step back. We're gonna be going back and revisiting one of our favorite recipes. It's called White Pot. Thanks for coming along with us as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. So it's been almost seven years to the day when we did our original White Pot episode, and, and it was really sort of groundbreaking at the time. One of our first uh, baked puddings, and it was so good that, um, you know, throughout the years when people have asked us, uh, what was your favorite recipe? It's one of those ones that always floats to the top. We remember it, and in fact, we miss it. We want to go back and make it again. That's what we're going to do today. And this particular version of it, I'm, I'm coming uh, from uh, the Housewife's Family Companion. This is uh, William Ellis, about 1750. Great cookbook. There's a couple of versions of White Pot in here. And of course, this recipe shows up in many, many uh, cookbooks in the 18th century because it is just that good. So let's talk about our ingredients. Uh, this one is definitely a little different than the first one we did. Uh, this is probably a little simpler, maybe a little less expensive. We've got a uh, bread. You're gonna need some uh, white bread for our crust or our crumb is actually what we need on the inside. We'll take off the crust. Uh, our other main ingredient is milk. And this is, they call for something like new milk. So whole milk will work in this case. Uh, we've got eggs. That's our other um, major ingredient here. We also will use some fruits. So in the original one, we used, um, I think, dates. This has got currants and raisins. Very, very typical for one of these puddings. Uh, we're going to need a little bit of sugar. And we've got butter here. And for our spicing, we'll use uh, some nutmeg. And uh, some of these recipes also, also call for allspice, for let's say a, a less expensive version. Let's start off with our eggs. We are going to use two whole eggs and two egg yolks. Now let's uh, get this whisked up. Now that our eggs are whisked up, let's add in some milk here. Now the original recipe that we did seven years ago used a lot of cream and butter. Instead, this one just uses milk. So it is maybe not, less, not as expensive. Okay, so there's our milk. And let's add in some, some sugar here. Uh, I'm using a turbinado sugar, so it's it's still got some molasses in it because we want a little bit of that molasses flavor. Not a lot. We don't, wouldn't want to use molasses, but there's a good a goodly amount of sugar. Get that stirred in. Even at this phase, we're just going to go ahead and get some nutmeg into this. If we were using a, a less expensive one, we would just use our allspice. Now let's set this part aside and let's work on the bread. That's really the next step. We need some nice thin slices of our bread. And while we could use a household loaf, brown bread, um, really we should be using a white bread in this if, if we've got it available. Let's go ahead and remove the crust. We just need the crumb out of this. So we can just cut, to, cut our crust away. This is a great opportunity if you've got leftover uh, bread that's stale, isn't uh, you know, isn't um, as good as as nice fresh bread. Uh, perfect opportunity to use that. So we've got our bread cut up. I've got a nice buttered dish here that we're going to bake this in, and we're going to start putting this together. Now, last time we we did a lot of buttering of the bread. I don't think we really need to do that. We're just going to cut straight to the chase. Uh, start out with a layer of bread at the bottom, and just kind of fill this in. Very nice. We're going to start sprinkling in. Um, we can kind of mix these raisins and currants up, so they're kind of half and half. Oh yeah, one last ingredient, I almost forgot it. I, I thought this was kind of fun. Uh, this one has some lemon zest in it. So I'll put most of this lemon zest just in our liquid and I'll just do a sprinkling here on this first layer. The rest of it goes in there. Uh, now that we have our first layer of bread and uh, fruit in there, let's just pour in enough of our mixture to just sort of bring it right up over the top of the bread. Looks good. And another layer of bread. We can mush it down a little bit. Just You don't want to pack it tight, but you want to uh, get it to soak up everything that's in there. 
you definitely want to keep stirring this mixture as you pour it in or else all the sugar will fall to the bottom. We don't want that to happen. We want that to be spread evenly throughout. We've got just a little bit of bread left. We don't want to get this too high because it's going to grow in the oven. Uh, so it'll puff up. Make sure to leave a little bit of room and be mindful it might boil over a little bit in your oven. So uh, protect your oven in that case. Okay, this is good. We've got this all sort of filled up with a little bit of room at the top. The last thing going in here is butter. We're going to go ahead and just put butter on the top of this in a couple of places. Nice couple of just big chunks of butter. There we go. That looks really good. Just like that, it's going to go into the oven and we're going to bake this um, depending on the size of your uh, white pot. Mm, probably 30 to 45 minutes. So let's get this one in the oven. If you're using a modern oven, 350 degrees or so. We're gonna go ahead and make a special pudding sauce for this one, and this is sort of pudding sauce royale. Uh, we've got some butter here, um, let's say a quarter of a cup of butter, and then we're gonna to add to that sugar, quarter of a cup of sugar, and then some brandy, and about an equal amount. And then maybe just a little bit of cream in here, just to thicken it up a touch, and then warm this all up over the fire. Now it isn't gonna stay as a sauce, we gotta keep stirring it, but, that's what we're gonna put over the top of this. I'm gonna add a little bit of, uh, of the special sauce to this one. Uh, can't go wrong with that special sauce. And let's try this out. Now I know why I always call this the best one. Um, I, if you get a chance to try it out, you will enjoy this. It's got some wonderful flavors. It's got this great texture, that cooked bread. We've got raisins. We've got some nutmeg in there. You know, we got to have that. Um, the, the pudding sauce, really, that's a super extra topper. You don't need that. It's excellent without it. Um, just wonderful flavors. You can adjust the sweetness. Tremendous. Remember, this one's from the William Hellis um, Housewife's Family Companion. Just a tremendous book with a lot of uh, poor people food, the why. It's not just a cookbook. It's, it's more of a farm, a homesteading kind of book from the English uh, countryside, 1750. Excellent, excellent book. This has been so much fun going back and checking out this seven-year-old recipe. It still holds up so well. If you want to go check out the original episode, you can see it here.